Matt Aguilar here from comicbook.com and welcome to an episode of Comic Book Tabletop. This week we're actually taking a look at one of the newest games on the market because technically it's not even out yet. It's on Kickstarter and that would be Come On and Spin Master Games Marvel United Multiverse. This game is live on Kickstarter right now and we're actually going to take you through uh, some of the new heroes, new villains, and we're also going to take a quick look at what is new in the game because this follows the first Marvel United which focused on all the kind of Marvel centric Avenger style characters and then X-Men United which of course focused on the X-Men. X-Men. Multiverse uh, is a little bit of everything. It actually features way more X-Men than I ever expected. If you're a Star Jammers fan, you're going to love this. Uh, there's also plenty of other kind of multiverse style characters. Captain Carter's in this, obviously. Uh, Cosmic Ghost Rider for a fun, just he's actually playable as a villain and as a hero. So lots of options here to get into. If you go to the Kickstarter page right now, you can actually see their newest expansion, which uh, for nerds like me who love Age of Apocalypse, there is an actual Age of Apocalypse expansion. And I am all over that. So definitely check that out. Uh, let's take a look at some of the newest features of Marvel United Multiverse. So the, one of the biggest new additions is actually equipment. It's actually its own small deck of cards. And one of the bigger complaints they always talked about was that the heroes themselves didn't feel in individual enough. They didn't feel like, oh, well, if I'm Captain America, why can't I throw my shield? Why can't I block things? Why don't I have those, some of those features that are very uh, intrinsic to the characters? And now we have a whole new equipment deck that kind of dubs that. So for Captain Carter, for instance, she can block with her shield, she can attack, and you, there's abilities in the deck and also ways to actually go ahead and recharge those cards once they're used. Uh, Loki has several things uh, in his hand that he can use. Uh, Black Panther, Shuri also has several things. So it's different for every character. Not every character in the core game has equipment. So it is something that you want to pay attention to when you're picking characters. For this uh, demo, as it were, I went ahead and picked all characters essentially, except for one that had equipment. I just wanted to use Ironheart because I'm a huge fan. So I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, I should have used somebody else. I wanted to use Ironheart. So that's the biggest thing. Of course, there's also a brand new solo mode that if you're by yourself and you still want to play with multiple heroes, there's a whole new way to do that. So those are the biggest things. Also, uh, if you go to the Kickstarter page, there are also the announcement of team decks. And those actually give you a whole new way to really kind of embrace the, the cooperative play format with teams like Star Jammers, X-Men, those kinds of things. And it's actually a whole separate deck of cards that you can choose to use instead of your own and really kind of get the feel of the team dynamic and also freshen up the gameplay a bit. So those are the biggest additions to Marvel United Multiverse. Right now we're gonna jump into actually some gameplay, uh, take you through a whole set of turns. We pick Doctor Doom. We know that Doctor Doom is one of the hardest villains in this set. I am a glutton for punishment and also I just wanted to use that mini because my lord is it sweet. <laughs> He's so cool in a rocket and freaking throne. Um, one of the things about him is that he actually has Doom bots. And for those fans of the comics and everything, no, dude clones himself constantly, has his own little minion army. Doom bots are actually a way for you to lose as well. So as opposed to just having the villain defeat all the heroes and losing, you can actually lose if all 15 Doom bots are out on the board. We'll go through kind of how they get added to it uh, when we take a turn. Important to note, this is a early version of the game because it is on Kickstarter. So we actually don't have Doombot tokens. I am using the Crisis tokens as a kind of stand in, but when the full game releases, obviously they will have their own tokens. So it's just a thing in case you notice on the board. Okay, let's kick off the game with the villain turn. Villain goes first. So we're gonna go ahead and pull Dr. Doom here and I'm gonna go through these one by one. The first icon up there will have a number That'll be how many spaces Dr. Doom or any villain moves. The second one is called BAM. That is whenever they land, so in this case, three spaces, wherever they land, that will execute a BAM effect of not only that location, but then also the villain's personal effect. And on their board here, which you can kind of see where it has their health and all of the different things the villain can do, there will be that same symbol and you go ahead and do whatever the text sells you to do. All the villains have different ones. For Maestro, it's he gains health a lot of times. In this case, Doom is all about putting Doom bots on the board. And that's one of the ways you can lose is if up to 15 of them are on the board at one time. So obviously that's kind of his biggest thing. So you rectify whatever that is. Then if he lands on a place with a card that also has a BAM effect, you also do that too. It all kind of combines, right? And then the final thing is whatever text is at the bottom. Now, a lot of cards have, uh, icons to tell you to put thugs and civilians on the board. 
In this case, he has special text here that tells you to put a Doombot on his space and also a crisis token on each Doombot that doesn't have one, essentially upping their health. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll execute all of that from the beginning. So he's gonna move three, one, two, three. He's gonna execute a BAM effect. And in his case, if Emperor Doom is not under pressure, which I'll go into that in a little bit, uh, accelerate the next villain turn by one. So in this game, villains go typically until later in the game, every three hero turns. So three heroes will take a turn and then the villain will go again. When this ability hits, Doom is able to go after every two heroes. Now, it only lasts for one, but you can see how he can quickly kind of start gaining more and more turns, start putting more and more bots on the board and screwing you over, right? So we'll go ahead and put that here. His, the BAM effect on that location, uh, which is for, you can see how all these locations have this card at the bottom. That is called a threat card. That is specific to whatever villain you are playing. In Doom's case, he has cards like Namor, uh, the Purple Man, which we'll get into in a second because that's a whole other thing. Uh, and then Doom bots, right? You need to be able to complete, use your abilities to go ahead and take, those, take care of those threat cards. Once you do, you'll see that they have special abilities on the locations themselves that you can activate at the end of your turn when you're on there, but you can't use those until you take care of the threat. And like, for instance, Namor takes five health, you whittle him down, take care of him, and then you can use that location special ability. So there's lots of cool things to do when you're on these spaces. You can't even attack Doom until you've actually gone ahead and taken care of two of these core missions. You have three of them, okay? We have clear threats, which is when you take care of a threat, you see this little symbol here, you'll go ahead and put that on this board. And then you'll see that as over time, you're taking care of more threats, then you'll go ahead and clear this. When you clear it, you get a special bonus. So like in this case, this one actually ups Doom. So it villain acts after every two hero cards. This one, villain is now vulnerable to damage. And then the third one is each hero immediately draws one card. So you're trying to do these missions to be able to actually hit him for damage and finally take him down. So that's kind of how a core villain turn and all the kind of abilities work. One special thing I do want to point out here is Purple Man, <laughs> because when we picked this Doom's overall like villain and, and mission, I didn't expect Purple Man to kind of be in this, but he has his own BAM effect, which is if there are no Doom bots in this location, you add one Doom bot in it, which kind of sucks on its own. But then, Purple Man cannot be defeated or cleared until all three missions are completed. So you have to do all of these before you can even hit him for damage. Then you have to hit him for whatever his health is, plus one, and you have to do it all in one turn. Otherwise, like he doesn't, you can't just ding him for, you know, one, and then like you have to actually match his health to be able to just nick him once. Like it, it and he's got five health in this. So if you don't hit five health, <laughs> It's like, that's like, it's a beast in its own. But the benefit to that is you don't actually have to beat Doom to win this scenario. You can actually just beat Purple Man and you win too. So, you know, pluses and minuses there. So let's get to one of the hero turns. We've gone, we've done everything for Doom. Actually, we need to go ahead and put Doom bots out. Ah, can't reach that. <laughs> there we go. Woohoo. Yay me. All right. So let's go ahead and start with the first hero. We're going to start with Shuri, Black Panther. She's really cool because we have two of her equipment cards. She has a hard light shield, which you can use on a villain turn. You ignore one damage dealt to any hero in your location, then turn this face down, uh, which is great. She has cards that like you can recharge that. And then she has the Spear of Bashenga, which is you use on your turn, you defeat one thug in your or an adjacent location, then turn his face down. Uh, again, these are just really cool things to be able to have to recharge and you start the game with them, which is awesome. So let's go ahead and see what we can do for her. I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and use a wild. So each of these cards has a different symbol at the bottom. And since she's the first hero player, she doesn't get any kind of bonus or, or benefit of the cards before her, but we'll see how that plays out in time. But for her, that's a wild symbol. That means that I can attack, I can move, I could uh, deal with, I could actually take care of some threat if I wanted to. I have. I have kind of whatever I want to do. In this case, let's move over here. Move to Muspelheim. Now that is my one action. I can move, 
I can't do anything else. So her turn is done. So my turn moves, I draw a card. Let's go ahead and see what I got here. So by the way, the artwork on Ironheart's cards are just fantastic. Ironheart has a lot of uh, like double cards. Like she can actually do two things on one card, which is great. But now also I have Shuri's card that I can also bounce off of. I can use that ability. So in this case, let's see, we want to be able to, there's a lot of threat that we need to take care of on the board. So let me do that. So I'm going to place her here. So now you notice I have a wild, which I can use for anything. That green symbol is a move. And then also I have that to where I can, like, I can take care of threat. You'll see on these threat cards in here in the locations, they have that same symbol. That means I need to have three of these to complete this and remove it. So I need three of those. So now let's see, I'm going to move one. I'm going to move here. And then I'm going to go ahead and use, I'm going to go ahead and use one of my abilities here. And I'm going to place, bang, right there. So now I'm one down, two to go. And then I'm also going to have got a wild here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and use it as an attack to take out a doom bot because I've already seen there's three on the board, right? We don't want that to grow. So I'm going to take care of that. Boom, boom. There's my turn. So you see, I was able to use Shuri's abilities. And that continues because like the next hero that goes can use Iron Hearts. Now, you can't go backwards. You can only use those two. So you use your card and the one behind you. But now, because remember, Dr. Doom had that card set up where he accelerated his turn. He now gets to go again. So I'll go ahead and remove this, though. Let's see what he's doing now. OK, ending world hunger. Emperor Doom recovers one health for each location with one or more citizens. Can't go above starting value. Well, that works in our case because he's still at max because I haven't even hit him yet. <laughs> So let's put this here. All right. So you'll notice it is one. He's going to move one. All right. Let's put boy over here. His BAM effect, if Emperor Doom is not under pressure, he is not, accelerate the next villain turn by one. So essentially, he gets this boost right back. So now he gets to go after the second turn again. Um, and then he go ahead and he actually, let's see. He recovers one for every single. So this would really suck if it wasn't at the beginning of the game. So essentially for all the citizens that are on the board, which are those little blue icons, he would get a health. But he's still at max health because we haven't even hit him yet. So yay us. <laughs> Actually came at a really good time. And then you'll see here at the bottom, those are the ones I was talking about. So essentially we put two on his location. Then we put one on each adjacent location. Let's go ahead and start that. And you'll notice that these squares will start to fill up. Let's go over here. So they will start to fill up, right? And if they overflow, then what happens is that there is a special overflow effect that you take care of, which is listed on their villain card. So in this case, we don't have to worry about that. But you'll notice uh, Niflheim has fully maxed out spaces. You can't actually put any more people there, thugs or civilians. So next time that happens on there, that will trigger that effect. And typically, it's a bad effect for you, right? Makes sense. All right, and then that's his turn. So now we move to the next hero, which would be Loki. Loki has a scepter, uh, which he can use on his turn. He can add two thugs in any location and perform two attacks in any other location. So for him, it, uh, let's see, let's see a space on the board that could do that. Okay, there we go. If you look at Muspelheim right in the center, there's two empty slots. So if he wants to add two thugs to that, it would fill it up, but then he could attack twice and he could do it in any location, which is super awesome. It's a great ability, but it does come with a cost, right? So for like right now, when we're kind of on the verge, of overflowing in a couple places, maybe not so great, but later in the game, maybe when there's a, a lot of spaces clear, that would be a great thing to do. So for now, we won't do that. But what I am going to do is this one. So this card is called Misleading. On the next villain turn, when the master plan card is revealed, 
You decide which location the villain moves to, ignoring the movement instructions on that card. So essentially what he gets to do is, next time we draw Doom, and Doom says, go two spaces or three spaces, and if that really screws me over, I don't have to worry about it. I can actually just pick where I want him to go because of that card, which is amazing. It's only got a wild on it, but hey, I'll take it, right? It's an awesome effect. Okay. And then on top of that, he gets his wild, plus he gets Ironheart's abilities. So that means I get a move, I can remove a threat, or I, and I can do a wild. I can do all three, which is awesome. Uh, let's see. Only, I'm going to use the move to get, let's see where I can go here. I need threat removed. Let me go help, uh, hmm. I really need to get to the spot <laughs> that has all those people about to overflow it. Uh, but I can't get over there in that amount of turns. Let's go here. I'll help Ironheart. So let's go one. So there's my move. Then I'm going to go ahead and take care of the threat. And I'm going to go ahead and use my wild to do the same thing again. So now. Ta-da! I've completed that, which is awesome. So now I remove this, and now you can see the ability freeze up. So at the end of my turn, you may discard one action token to swap any two of your cards in the storyline, which is cool. So, and that threat that I removed from here goes right here. So I'm already on my way to completing a mission. Not bad. And also removing that threat means that that BAM effect would not trigger if Doom is on that space. So that's great, because that means less Doom bots. Yeah. All right, so that's Loki. And now let's move to Cosmic Ghost Rider. By the way, someone before we came in here uh, said mean things about Cosmic Ghost Rider. And I don't know how that is, because Cosmic Ghost Rider kind yeah. of rules. He's got a baby Thanos. I'm sorry. And an awesome bike. How can you not like that character? All right, so let's take a look and see what we got here. Uh, Cosmic Ghost Rider also has two pieces of equipment. He has the Hellfire Chain, which you can use on your turn, attack against up to two different targets in your location. Then, of course, you turn it face down. Then the Hell Cycle is just an extra move, essentially, and you go ahead and exhaust that. Okay, so Cosmic Ghost Rider has this one here. Cosmic Villain Punishment. I can defeat one thug in your and both adjacent locations. I'm going to stay right here, actually. There's no reason to move. So I have an attack that I can do automatically, but I'm going to use the card first. So I defeat one thug, right? And now we put him in the defeat thugs mission. So I'm on my way there. And then it lets me do it in each adjacent location. So this one doesn't have any thugs, but this one very much does. And now he goes here. Then that red symbol at the bottom is an attack. So now I can just attack in my space. Uh, I'm not going to do that because Again, Purple Man, <laughs> I can't even touch him until all three have been defeated. So it is what it is. Um, but I haven't done the wild yet. So what do we want to do? What do we want to do? Um, I'm going to go ahead and... Hmm. I think I'm going to go ahead and move. So I'm going to move here. Join my buddy. What's up, buddy? <laughs> there you go. So I hope that gave you an idea of how Marvel United Multiverse works, uh, how the new mechanics work, the equipment cards, and what they add to your deck. Um, you know, this is just a, a very much a, a prelude. Uh, once you get into the game and start using those abilities more and more, you'll kind of see how effective they are and how much they add to each of your characters. But of course, you can check out all of our coverage right now on Marvel United Multiverse right here on comicbook.com. And make sure to check out the Kickstarter page to back the game yourself and see all of the different things you can add on to it. Thank you so much and uh, peace until next time.